That's the feeling we've all had. Now new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. Well, it's the 4th of July and uh, I have a little trick that I use every year because I don't plant a lot like a big plot of corn of any a single variety of corn and so when you have smaller smaller beds of corn one way that you can get full ears is to hand pollinate and so that's something that I do every year for many years I would plant you know like a block of corn like this and I would end up with like these sort of smaller ears and missing kernels on the ear and so then I learned about hand pollinating. Uh, corn is wind pollinated so uh, you need a large stand in order to get the pollen to fall out of the tassels and land on the silks and uh, one way to ensure that if the wind's not blowing the right direction you're still gonna get plenty of pollen on your silks is to do it by hand. Corn is one of those plants that can have sort of the effects of the genetics in the kernel itself. So if it's cross-pollinated with some other variety, the kernel that's formed from that pollination will have the attributes of both the parent plants. So it kind of can be a problem if you have, you know, wind blowing pollen in from like field corn that's GMO or whatever, because you'll end up with a sweet corn kernel that'll be super starchy because it's got the genetics of that starchy field corn in it or a flower corn. So, you know, there's no way that you can completely prevent that unless you bag all of your tassels and bag all of your silks and I don't want to do that much, go to that much effort. And it seems to work fine to just hand pollinate and you take the, uh, the pollen from the same variety and put it onto the silks of that same variety, but you're also trying to mix up the individual plants so you're getting some more genetic diversity in there. So the process is pretty simple. Basically, you just take something like a newspaper or a magazine, something that's wide enough to catch the pollen, and then you shake it off and catch the pollen as much as you can. Here's another one here. And the time to do this is like late morning, ideally, because that's when the tassels have dried just enough to release their pollen. And you want to get it before later in the day, which now is kind of like early afternoon, so it's a little bit late to be doing this. But it seems to, seems to have a lot of pollen in there. Now this silk here, you can tell that it's just come out, and there's a, it's a second ear on this stalk here, so it probably won't develop fully anyways. But some of this corn is flower corn and some of it's popcorn, and so even if I get half this ear to fill up with uh, kernels, I'll still get something out of it. It's not like sweet corn where uh, you'd really rather have the full thing totally developed. So anyways, this this, cor this silk here, you can tell that it's pretty fresh. It's sort of full of uh, moisture, uh, which means it's fresh and it's ready to be receptive to pollen. And each one of these silks has like these little silk threads, has little hairs, like mic microscopic hairs on it. And when pollen uh, is blown over the surface of them, they will grab onto the pollen. And then that's a way of fertilizing them and you can see how they sort of just get covered with the pow powder of the pollen and just blowing that pollen on there in a cloud will ensure that you get pretty full pollination there and so that whole ear should get pollinated from just that effort right there. <laughs> Well, 
thanks for watching this little trick for uh, getting better corn kernel development in your ears of corn if you have a small small planting of corn. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share and like this video and I'll see you next time. to wild animals in their habitats. I started gardening at the age of seven because I love to see plants grow and get the produce of my hard work and knowledge of growing things. I studied environmental science in college and I've worked on a number of organic farms. I've worked in cooperative businesses and lived in cooperative houses for many years. So I know about cooperative alternatives to capitalism, their benefits and their drawbacks. Although I'm no expert, I have a familiarity with and interest in economics and the role it plays in human